Wait, before this video begins, I have one thing to say. Happy late 4th of July! This video was supposed to come out on July 4th, but I suck at schedules, so just... Pet. Domestic or tamed animal kept for companionship or pleasure. That's cool. I'm sure many of you guys watching this video right now have a pet. I know I do. I'm going to talk about all the pets I've had in the past or right now. First, there's Susie and Toodles. When I was a little kid, my family had two doggos named Susie and Toodles. I was very young when I had them, so I don't remember a lot about them. I just know that Toodles died when I was really young, so I basically don't have any stories of her, leaving Susie. Susie was going blind and deaf when I was in elementary school and died. I don't really have any stories for her. Next up, there's Snowflake and Fluffy. They are both guinea pigs. I got Snowflake from my cousin's on Christmas Eve. I named him Snowflake because he's easily triggered. I named him Snowflake because I was wanting to change his name based on the season. I was a little kid, okay? He died three months later. He didn't really have any exciting stories either. It turns out my cousins got Snowflake from PetSmart, and the manager there told them that he probably only had a few weeks left to live and nobody bought it because of a heart issue it had, which is just super sad. So, wanting to give Snowflake a loving home, they purchased the guinea pig and gave him to me. Although it may seem tragic, at least Snowflake got a good home. By the way, kudos to the manager, probably the most honest manager on earth. Next, there's the other guinea pig, Fluffy. My older brother got Fluffy a few months after the snowflake incident, Fluffy was quite a troublemaker. One time, he managed to get stuck inside the couch while my brother was cuddling him on his lap while watching his TV. I don't even know how, just guinea pig, lap, inside couch. My entire family, and by entire family I mean my parents and older brother while the rest of my siblings and I just watched from a distance, flipped the couch millions of times, pressing their ears on the couch for the sounds of fluffy squeaks to ascertain his position. Finally, Fluffy was retrieved from the couch and all was well. Fluffy lived a very long and happy five year life. Next up is Goldie the Goldfish. I was still really young when I got Goldie. I was at a carnival with my parents and I saw a ring toss game where you could win a goldfish. You know, those goldfish that they give out at carnivals that are actually supposed to be feeder fish. So, I played and got the goldfish and immediately named him Goldie. He was given to me in a small plastic bag as usual, and I was paranoid that something bad was going to happen to Goldie. I literally stared at Goldie the entire ride home. When my family got home, we put him in a big glass vase and put a newspaper with tape over it because my dad said that goldfish could leap out of the water. Wait, do goldfish actually jump out of water? That's interesting. The next morning, I immediately checked on Goldie, and he was fine. Later on, my parents and I went shopping for a fish bowl, fish food, stuff like that. Then, I came back and showed Goldie his new home. However, my parents wanted to talk to me. They let me know that he was meant to be a feeder fish, was missing two fins, and had some sort of disease or parasite, meaning he would probably only live a few weeks, if not days. I was crushed by the news, fearing another death of a pet. But Goldie must have had lots of determination or got exposed to plutonium or sucked up six human souls or something because that goldfish was literally most likely immortal. This diseased feeder fish that was half starved when I got it that was also missing two fins lived for five flipping years. We thought he was on the verge of unlocking the secret to immortality until he died one day, obviously. For the last few weeks of his life, he started acting really weak, sometimes barely moving at all in his bowl, and I knew he was about to die. Soon afterward, I came into my bedroom to an empty fishbowl. I wasn't really upset over Goldie's death because you can't really get attached to a fish. It's just that I was upset because I thought that he deserved a funeral and needed to be buried in the backyard and not flushed down the toilet. It's, it's, it's stupid. Either way, Goldie was a trooper. He lived a long, fulfilled life of endlessly circling around in his fishbowl, never leaving my bedroom, as isolation and forlorn melancholy relentlessly wreaked havoc on his fall altering sense of sanity. Next up, there's Lily. We had her for about two weeks before she left one too many lumps of excrement on the floor. She was a Yorkie. She was doomed not to be potty trained right from the start. My family gave Lily away to a friend of one of my siblings. We haven't heard of her existence since. Now, let's move on to my pet that is alive. Right now, I have a doggo named Buddy. He's a golden doodle, which is what you get when you breed a golden retriever with a poodle. They're very intelligent and fluffy. Buddy also has this awesome poofball on his head and he's a cancer survivor. Now, I have this really strange habit where I give Buddy a voice and a personality and sometimes have conversations with him.
Hey, buddy, how are you? I'm not doing very well at all. What? Why? I tried to chase the neighbor's doggo, but he ran away and I got in trouble for leaving the yard. Yeah, that happens sometimes. This is so stupid. Anyway, that's all I can put into this video. I can't add any more stories without this video being insanely long because I have a lot of stories. Also, on top of that, I know this video is going to be super late because right now while I'm recording it is July 1st because I suck at schedules. So, I'll probably have to split this into two videos or maybe even more. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye!